In the last video, I showed how to teleport a player to a specific location inside a game, and a person in the comments asked me how to teleport a player to one of many specific locations. So I thought I might as well take the, the last tutorial, take it to the next level, and show how to do something like that. So as you can see, I have a couple of platforms in front of me here. I have the same setup as last time. The only difference is that instead of just one location to teleport to, which was the yellow platform, we now have a green and a red one too. So what I want to do here is when I do something, whether it being interacting with you know a button or just pressing a button on my keyboard, um, when I say a button, I mean like an in-game button you press with your player, <laughs> I want to teleport to one of these three platforms depending on which button I press. So we're going to do that today. Uh, the way we're going to start it out with is I'm going to have a place for my player. I'm just going to show what I have here. So as you can see, I start out on the blue platform and I want to teleport to one of these three. I can't just go over there because I would just fall down. So I want to be able to click one, two or three on my keyboard and then teleport to one of these three platforms depending on what I'm pressing. Now, just like with anything else when it comes to video games, there's many ways to do this. The way that I would prefer to do it is to have these three platforms and then on each one of them, as you can see, I have each of them as a game object in here. I would right click, create an empty object and call this one TP underscore one for the first one, which is going to be the teleport location for the first platform over here. And this is basically just going to be a empty game object. So as you can see, I can drag it around. There's not nothing really there. Um, if I want to see it, I can go up inside the inspector and just mark it with an icon so I can actually see it. So now I can see it says TP underscore one over there. So I can take it and I can duplicate it two more times. I can move them on each of the platforms like so, rename them. And then of course I want them to be located centered to each of the platforms. The reason I'm doing game objects instead of just teleporting directly to the location of these platforms here is because if I were to say that I want to move my teleport location at some point, all I'll need to do is just take one of these and move it to wherever I want to teleport to. So I can just take the location and move it and that will just be automatically updated inside the code that we're going to write in order to teleport the player. So having these teleport locations here as just empty game objects is going to allow for us a lot more customization in the future if you want to change the, the location. So with these three here, I'm going to go inside my scripts folder. I'm just going to create a new script. And this one is going to take care of all the teleportation happening inside my game. So I'm just going to call this one teleport player. And I do have this really badly written player script that I used in the last video as well. So don't comment on the code for the actual player controller because it's not the best. Um, <laughs> now I'm going to take this script and I'm just going to move it on to my player and just going to open up the script inside my editor so we can edit it. And from here, the first thing I want to do is I want to actually grab these three game objects that I created because I want to have the location of them. So I'm going to go inside my class, which is called teleport player. And I'm just going to create a game object type, call it TP1, go to the next one. Actually, we can just duplicate it. So we'll duplicate it two more times. So TP1, two, and three. Now, of course, we do also need to have these viewable inside the editor so we can drag the game objects into their fitted slots inside the inspector. So we don't have to make them public, but we can serialize them. So they're still private, but we can still see them inside the inspector. So I'm just gonna say serialize fields. And I'll just copy that down so we can actually see it. So with that, we can go back inside the inspector and I can now take my player. You can see I have my teleport player script down here with no game objects slotted into these slots down here. So I'll just take teleport one, move it into TP1 and the same one for the second one, TP2 and TP3. So now we have the actual game object. So the next thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to get the location of these game objects here. Now I like to create some properties that just sort of contain their location. So I'm gonna create a new vector three type data, and I'm gonna call this one TP one location. I guess we could call it. We're just gonna give it some kind of name. It doesn't really matter how we're gonna call it. Uh, I'm gonna duplicate it two more times. So two and three. And then I'm just simply gonna set them equal to the location of these game objects here. So inside my start, I'm just gonna say TP1 location and I'm gonna set it equal to TP1 
dot transform dot position. And I'm just going to do the same thing for the other two. So we're going to say TP2 location is going to be equal to TP2 uh, dot location. So we're just going to say three and three. So now we have all three locations here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually teleport the player once we get some kind of input from the player. Now, the way that I'm going to do it is I'm just gonna go and press a button on my keyboard in order to teleport the player. And it's the exact same method you're going to be using whether you, you decide that in your game, the player in the actual game is going to be stepping on a teleportation pad or clicking an in-game button or something. It's the same method you're going to be using. So there's no, need for me to make it more advanced than it really needs to be. So inside my update, I'm going to run an if statement and I'm just simply gonna check if a certain button has been pressed. And then if that happens, I'm going to teleport my player. So I'm going to say if input dot get button down parentheses. And then inside here, I'm just gonna go ahead and say one because if I want to, if I get the, the one button on my keyboard, then I'm going to teleport in one direction. Else if I also get an input, but this time we're getting number two, and then we can just copy paste. Else if we're getting button number three, then we want to run a specific method inside one of these statements here. So now with this here, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually teleport the player. And before we continue, I just noticed that, of course, I didn't use proper naming convention up here. This should have been a lowercase t if we had to be completely technically correct with naming convention. Um, whoops, <laughs> it's not going to break anything. I just wanted to mention it because I know people are going to comment on it. So I just wanted to address that really quick. With that, um, there's a couple of ways we can do this. And there's always a more optimized way of doing things. In this case here, I'm going to create a method, which is just simply going to, based on the input, run the code that is going to teleport our player. And the reason I'm doing that through a method is because I don't want to have to duplicate my code again and again and again, because that's kind of like, you know, it's just gonna, it's going to be unoptimized if you have the same code multiple places. So in this case here, we're going to go down and we're just simply going to create a void teleport our player. I just realized because we can't actually name methods the same name as our classes up here. So I couldn't call it teleport player. If I did that, you'll see that we get an error message. And that's because we can't actually name it the same as this up here. So it has to be teleport our player in this case here. With that, I can then go inside of it and I can say game object because this script is attached to the player, which is why I can do this. So I can refer to the game object this script is attached to dot transform dot position. And I'm going to set it equal to a variable. So I'm going to go inside my method here and I'm going to say that we have a int, actually no, not an int, a vector three data type. And I'm just going to call it, let's call it something like, let's call it TP location without the actual numbers here. And let's do proper naming convention this time. So let's actually make this non-capitalized. There we go. And I'm just going to set it equal to this particular variable here. So with this, we can now call upon this method here. I'm just going to take it, go inside my get button input. And instead of doing a vector three TP location, I'm just simply going to pass in the particular location I want to teleport to. So I'm just going to do this, copy, paste, copy, paste and pass in the different names. <laughs> it is of course arguable whether making a method for this tiny bit of code, um, this tiny bit of code down here is more unoptimized or not. Um, had there been much more code, this would have been the best way to do it, which is why I'm showing how to do it this way. So with this, technically, we should be able to teleport our player. Let's actually go ahead and test this out because you may actually not be able to teleport your player depending on how your player controller is actually set up. So let's go ahead and say we want to grab the TP location. Actually, let's just, um, yeah, let's paste in the TP location and say we also want to add a teleport text. Before we continue though, I did just realize that we have a mistake here. Uh, we don't want to get the button down. We actually want to get the 
key down and then we don't want to just put in one we actually want to get key code dot alpha one which is actually the key code for one and then we want to copy this and paste it in paste it in and get for two and three so now we're getting the input for the, the different number keys on our keyboard so now if i go into my editor and i play and i press one of the keys on my keyboard so one two or three you can see that this says uh teleports and then it gives me a location that i should teleport to which is actually the key for that one over there so we are getting an input but we're not really teleporting huh that seems kind of odd because didn't we set that up inside our code we sure did, it's right here. So we're not really teleporting to the location that we want to teleport to. The reason for that, if you get this error, because it may work for you, I just wanna point that out. If you're using a player controller that is based on physics, so the rigid body component, this is probably not going to be an issue for you, but because I'm actually using a customized player controller that is not based on the rigid body, uh, which in my case is just a better way to do it because to prevent uh, jittering when it comes to like moving around and looking at objects because the camera on your player can be a little bit out of sync with the player when you move him around. So I've found the best way to be just to hard code a player controller. And if you do that, this is most likely going to be an issue for you. So the way we can fix that, and I did actually get some help from this from a person in the comments last video, who actually gave me a small improvement to how I did it. So if I were to go inside my code here, I want to disable the controls of my player while I'm teleporting. And the reason I want to do that is so that the player controls, whether it being the movement of the actual player or the mouse movement looking around, I want to disable both of those, then teleport the player and then enable it back on and that's basically how you get around this issue here so inside my player controller you'll actually notice that i have all this extremely messy code don't comment on it okay and basically i have this one property up here at the top here called disabled it is set to false but if i were to set it to true inside my update here you'll actually see that my mouse movement and my player movement is inside a disabled check so if I were to set this one to true, I can't move my mouse and I can't move my player. So with that knowledge, going back inside our script here, if I were to create a IE numerator, which is a way for us to delay something inside our code, I can go in and create one called delay teleport. And inside of here, I first of all want to get access to my player controller script which I have done already up here. Now, I actually did this when you were not looking because I had to cut in this video here because of this key alpha mistake down here. Um, but I did actually create a reference to my player controller script inside this game object. And I'll go through what I did so you have the same thing as me here because I know it can be confusing when I cut in videos. Uh, basically, the thing you need to know is that our player controller and our teleport player script is on the same game object. We have to remember that. And then inside the start function, I went ahead and took my player controller, set it equal to this game object that we're right now on, because they're on the same game object, so we can do this, dot get component player controller, which means that I'm now actually graphing the player controller script that is on this same game object, which means that now I can take player controller and go inside my delay teleport reference to it and access any public properties or methods inside my player controller script. For example, our disabled, which is right up here at the top here. So I can actually grab this disabled dot disabled, set it equal to true, which now means that our player controller is disabled. So I can't move my player around. So what I'll do is I'll go down to the bottom and I'll use the one tip that my subscriber gave me in the last video, which is instead of actually setting a delay to a certain amount of seconds, like milliseconds or seconds, we can actually go in and say yield return null, like so, which actually goes in and just skips a frame instead of us having to manually set a certain amount of seconds or milliseconds. So it just skips a frame, which should work. And what we'll then do 
is teleport our player. So we'll reference to this teleportation script, which means that we also need to go in and actually pass in some data. So we do actually need to do the same thing here. We'll create a vector three, TP location. So we're just gonna pass in the TP location into this method here. It's the same thing we're doing as up here. We're just doing it inside a second method. In here, I'll then afterwards again, return null. And then I'll just simply enable my player controller back again. So I'll set it to false. So with this created here, we actually need to go back up inside our if statements up here and reference to this enumerator instead of this method here, because we don't want to call in this method until we have disabled our player controller. So I'm going to go up inside my first if statement, and I'm going to say we want to start a coroutine, which is how we actually start one of these enumerators down here. So I want to give it the name of the enumerator, which is called delay teleport, parentheses, and then I want to pass in the data, which currently is TP location one for this one. I'm just going to copy, paste, and paste, and then TP location two and three. And this right here, just to summarize, is allowing for us to press a button. Then we call in the coroutine, which is down here, which then disables our player controller. Then it teleports our player using this method that we have up here. And then it enables the player controller back on again. So going inside our game, we can actually play. When I press a button, you can see that we now teleport. And I can actually teleport around depending on which button I'm pressing. So I can teleport back and forward and everything is working exactly like it should. So this is how you can teleport using a very basic script. And also if you have a player controller that is based on not the rigid body, this is how you can do it. Of course, this would be a lot less code if you were to be using a rigid body. I'm pretty sure that it works with rigid body. Uh, so you wouldn't need to actually create the delay down here, which again, like I said, is less code, but this is how you can do it if you actually decide to do the player controller in the same way as I like to do it and get everything working. So with this, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was quite fun to set this up because I have never done this before. I, I know how to do it, but I've never done it before. So it was just kind of fun to actually do. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time.